Hi, everybody. Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping at EFT so that you can eliminate self-sabotage and take the action that you want. If you haven't done so already, I would really encourage you to sign up for and receive our free 10-part guide on how you can use tapping to eliminate self-sabotage. There is instructions, there is videos, there is tap-alongs, there is scripts. And basically what happens is every single day over the course of the next two weeks or so, you will receive an email every single day with a little tool that you can use right away in order to make it easier for you to take action during the day. And the reason why we break it down into 10 separate emails is so that you're not overwhelmed. Instead, what you do is every single day, you're going to get a little bite-sized morsel that you can use on that day, which is going to make taking action so much easier by using tapping. Again, all you need to do is go to tappingqa.com, click on the big blue button. If you happen to be listening to today's podcast inside of the website, if you go up in that right hand column up at the top, you will see a blue button where you can get the 10 part guide absolutely free. This is Gene Montrestell, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 420, originally aired January 8th, 2020. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. Today, we are going to be talking about the choices that we make and how we can be really judgmental and really hard on ourselves around the choices that we're making. And when we make bad choices, how we end up feeling like we are failures, failures as humans, or we are moral failures, or we're doing something that is against our nature when we make the choices that we don't want to make. And this is a really good thing for us to be thinking through. So what I'd like to present today is I want to present a framework for you to think about the choices that you're making through a slightly different lens. And this lens is going to provide you two things. The first thing it's going to provide you is it's going to provide you a new way of understanding your choices, which are going to allow you to be a little gentler with yourself. And when I say gentler with yourself, I don't mean letting yourself off the hook, but instead gentler in that you're going to judge yourself more accurately for what has actually happened because we have a tendency to be pretty hard on ourselves. The second thing that this lens is going to give you is it is going to give you a way of tapping for the choices that you've made in the past so that you can make better choices in the future. So not only is it going to soften how you treat yourself, but it's going to give you a really practical tool about how you can move forward in a thoughtful and deliberate way. And at the end, we're going to do a few minutes of tapping on how I tap on something exactly like this. So this is a thought that has been at the front of my mind for quite a while, but it was re-brought to the front of my mind because of a conversation I was having with one of my clients. My client, uh, who we will call Steve, um, Steve was in a circumstance where the question Steve asked me was, how do you know you are a good person? And When someone asks me a question, one of the things I've gotten really clear about is trying to understand the intention behind the question. Because oftentimes people will ask us a question and we think they're asking one question when really they're asking another question and something is lost in translation. And you know what this is like, where you think you're being clear and you say one thing and you're the person you're talking to at asks answers and responds to something completely different just because of the way that language works and how we don't always communicate effectively. So I asked in response to Steve, what leads you to believe that you are not a good person? And Steve's response was because of the choices I am making. And what was really interesting was in this particular circumstance, Steve was not struggling with doing something that was morally reprehensible. It wasn't like Steve was intentionally hurting someone or taking advantage of someone or doing something that was against their character. Instead, 
In this particular circumstance, Steve had made some commitments in which he was deciding that he wanted to change and renegotiate that commitment and act in a different way. And in doing so, Steve wasn't even trying to run away from the responsibility of renegotiating these particular things. So it wasn't like Steve was making a choice and then running away and not engaging with the person that they had been engaging with, but was going to be really clear and honest and upfront about these choices. And so as we wrestled with this, we came to the realization that There was a choice that was being made that was a really functional choice. And for me, all the choices that we make are functional choices. And that means that the choices we are making, we're making because they serve a particular function. Eating breakfast is a functional choice. It is giving me nourishment to go through my day. Being in a circumstance where I walk away from a relationship is a functional choice because I'm taking care of myself. But not all of the choices we make are good choices or choices that if we were of clear head, we would want to make. But instead, what is happening is we are always making the best possible choice we can make based on the resource state that we are in and the information that we have. Let me say that again. We are always making the best possible choice based on the resource state that we are in and the information we have. And that is not to say that we're not responsible for our choices. You know, it doesn't mean that I just, well, I could just blame the circumstance I was in and therefore that I did the best that I could. You did the best that you could, but you still need to take responsibility for that. And the place that this lesson came through most clear for me was when I was teaching anger management in the county jail and I was working with my guys around anger and how anger controlled them and in many cases got the best of them and the thinking process that happens that I had one of the guys in my class talk about one time in which he had gotten into a fight and as he was about to punch someone else At the beginning of the punch, when his hand was cocked back, he was in this sense of rage where he was trying to protect himself. And literally, as his hand was coming forward, he realized that if he punched this person, there was going to be a bunch of negative consequences that came from it in the moment and how the other person was going to respond. And if he got into a circumstance where he hit another person, that would be another assault charge, which had serious consequences. You know, I'm having a conversation with someone who was sitting in a jail. That sort of thing had happened in the past. And so the decision to hit someone else, he was in two different resource states in a split second. As his hand was coming forward, he realized what was going on. And in this particular case, he was actually able to redirect his hand so he didn't make contact. Now, in this particular circumstance, the police were never involved. But if they would have been involved, the difference between hitting someone and not might be the difference between assault and attempted assault. And there are different consequences to those two things. And so he was able to change his mind in the middle of what was going on. But when he was really angry, anger shows up when we perceive an attack. And he felt like he was being attacked and he was trying to protect himself. And for some of my guys in jail, there were times in which they were literally alive because of their anger. And I'm using the word literal accurately here that they were in circumstances that because of their anger, it gave them a strength and a power to fight back in which they were able to escape situations in which they could have been killed. And so literally their anger kept them alive. And so in that particular moment, anger was a really, really functional choice. And sometimes anger isn't a functional choice. One of my guys who was in my anger management class was there because he had gotten really angry at his partner. And in response to that, took her computer and smashed it and threw it across the room, breaking it on the wall. So that is functional. He had perceived an attack, but it wasn't a good type of functional. It was a disproportionate response to what was going on. And so my goal in everything that I do is twofold. 
One, I want to be consciously making the choices that I'm making and not simply making them out of habit. And two, I want to be making choices that are proportionate and well-informed. Because all of the choices we are making are functional. They're serving a function, but sometimes that function is not necessarily being done in a way that is useful in the short term and the long term. So, for example, if I'm having a really frustrated day and I eat an entire pint of cookies and cream ice cream, that's a really functional choice because the function of the choice is to put a bunch of sugar and chemicals into my body. So my body is responding to the sugar and chemicals and it mutes whatever emotional sensations I'm having over the course of the day. I mean, that's all emotional eating is, is that it's a form of medication in which we are numbing an emotional sensation. And so it's functional, but if I'm doing that every single day, that's not really a healthy thing for me to do in the medium and long term. So there's a difference between a functional choice and a good choice. There's a difference between a functional choice in the short term and a functional choice in the medium and long term. And so my goal always is to make sure that I'm making conscious, deliberate choices that are proportionate and well-informed. And so that's where tapping comes in. Tapping is a really powerful tool for us to be able to look at the state that we're in and make sure that we're making choices that are proportionate and emotionally proportionate and well-informed. And so when I am doing tapping on sadness, on overwhelm, on frustration, I'm not trying to get rid of those emotions. Those emotions are not the enemy. Instead, Those emotions are pieces of information that may be showing up in a way that is too big. Again, we look at those two examples of anger. One example of anger was it was proportionate because their life was truly in danger. The other was disproportionate because it was an argument with a partner and they ended up breaking a bunch of stuff that didn't need to be broken. And so tapping moves the emotions to a place that is proportionate. The second is making sure that they are well informed. You know, when I feel angry, it's because I perceive an attack. Well, in a conscious, logical space, at distance from what we're doing, it's really easy to see, well, was I really being attacked? You know, I'm sad when I'm disconnected from something that is important to me. I'm frustrated when I'm not having my needs or desires met. I'm angry when I am perceiving an attack. And so what we need to do, I feel afraid when I perceive danger. What I need to do is make sure that's really good or really accurate, you know, well-informed. It's good that I'm afraid of lions, but if I didn't leave my office here in Brooklyn because there is a lion up in the Central Park Zoo and another one in the Bronx Zoo, that's disproportionate. The other piece that is new for me is that I have gotten okay with me making quote-unquote bad choices that are functional. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, I don't know if you know these cookies. They're, the, they're these little kind of waffly wafer cookies that have frosting in between them. And typically when you buy them in a store, it's kind of like Neapolitan ice cream. Um, there's some strawberry ones, there's some vanilla ones, and there's some chocolate ones. And they come in a little block. And if you eat them, it kind of leaves this kind of wafery dust everywhere. If I'm having a really bad day, and I'm really overwhelmed with my emotions, and I have picked up one of those from the corner store from the bodega on my way home, it is very easy for me to be watching television. And the next thing I know, there's like this empty wrapper and there is just dust everywhere because I've cleaned out this entire package of cookies. And in that circumstance, I don't remember eating any of the cookies. I don't remember their flavor. I was just consuming them as a way to manage this thing that I was experiencing. So it was happening really unconsciously. My goal now is to be in a circumstance where I am, if I am going to do that, I want to do it in a conscious way. So if I'm going to eat a bunch of ice cream because I know I am emotionally appeasing myself to do this... I will get the ice cream out. I will even state that right now I feel like crap and I'm going to be eating some ice cream right now because I know it's going to make me feel better. No, that's not a good choice. It's far from a great choice, but it's a choice that I'm making in a conscious way. 
I am naming that eating the ice cream is a functional choice and I am owning and I'm taking the responsibility for that functional choice. And that's a really good thing for me to do, even if the choice isn't the best in the short term. Because what I have found, if I do that, one, I'm much less likely to beat myself up because I'm naming why I'm doing what I am doing. And two, I find that I am, um, I find that I'm less likely to make a more extreme bad choice. So, for example, if I'm naming that I'm eating the ice cream for emotional reasons, I might have a bowl of ice cream. If I'm not naming that I'm eating the ice cream for emotional reasons, but that's why I'm doing it, I might clear out the entire carton. And so by stating out loud that I'm making a functional choice that I know is not a good long term choice, just by stating that I start to mitigate the damage that I'm doing with a bad choice. That is a functional choice in the short term that is setting me up to move forward in the long term in a a, a less healthy way. So all of this is to say that all of the choices that you are making serve a function. For me, the goal is to be conscious of those choices that I'm making for any sort of functional reason and to state that function to myself. Because if I do that, I'm more likely to make choices that are not just functional in the short term, but are functional in the medium and long term. Second, by doing that and thinking about those choices as functional, when I am overwhelmed by an emotional state, when I'm acting from a place of incomplete information, because we do this all the time, we make a choice where we make a choice based on the information we have and we learn something after making that choice that impacts the relation, impacts the action, and then we feel really bad because we made a bad choice based on the new information, but we didn't have the information at the moment. So it makes it easier for me to be gentler with myself about the choices I am making where I'm basing it on the experience I had in that particular moment as I was navigating all of that. So I'm conscious of the choice that I'm making. I'm stating the fact that it is functional and I am paying attention to the fact that I am human and I'm doing the best that I can, which allows me to be gentler with myself. And the funny thing is when I approach it in that way, I actually make more good choices. Because it sounds as if what I'm doing is I'm just giving my excuse, myself an excuse to make bad choices. This is a bad choice. It's functional. Therefore, I'm giving myself carte blanche to make all of these choices. I'm being gentle with myself by understanding that I'm a flawed human that is overwhelmed by the moment. Therefore, I'm just giving myself an out and an excuse to make a bunch of bad choices. What I found is the opposite is true. When I hold myself to an unrealistic standard, when I emotionally, subconsciously, and consciously beat myself up for making bad choices, I'm not beating myself into making good choices. I just am giving myself something else to beat myself up about because I've made a bad choice and now I'm beating myself up and I feel bad about beating myself up and that doesn't impact my choices in any way. So thinking in this fashion is actually going to position us to be in a place where good, thoughtful, deliberate choices happen more often. So with all of that said, let's do a little tapping. Let's set ourselves up to be okay with the choices that we make, taking responsibility for them, and recognizing that the functional choices are an opportunity for us to grow and heal through the process. So tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath, and just move from tapping point to tapping point in the order that makes the most sense for you repeating after me. I make a lot of choices I'm not happy with. I make a lot of choices that in hindsight, I wish were different. I even make choices that are down. I even make choices that are unhealthy for me. I even make choices that make my life harder for me. I recognize all of these choices are functional choices. All of these choices are based on the information I have at the moment of the choice. All of these choices are based on the resource state that I'm in 
when I make these choices. Because that is the case, I don't always make the best choice. Sometimes my emotions get the best of me. Sometimes I don't have all of the information. Sometimes I'm just acting out of habit without any conscious thought at all. By recognizing the choices I make in the moment are functional. By recognizing the choices I make are impacted by my emotional state. By recognizing the fact the choices I make are based on the information I have in a moment makes it easier for me to be gentle with myself. makes it easier for me to be gentle with my choices. Makes it easier for me to understand why I'm making the choices I'm making. This is not giving me a free pass. This is not letting me off the hook. This is not me trying to escape the responsibility of my choices. This is me recognizing that I'm human. This is me recognizing all of the things that impact my choices. By being gentler with myself, I'm not giving myself a free pass. I'm actually setting myself up for better choices. I'm creating the space to evaluate the choices I've made in the past with a clear head. I'm allowing myself to move forward in a thoughtful and deliberate way. I'm giving myself permission to heal. I'm creating the space for that healing. By recognizing my choices are functional, I'm understanding why I'm making the choices. I'm not making up excuses. I'm creating a platform for transformation. I'm not hiding from the moment. I give myself permission to be gentle with myself. I give myself permission to be gentle with my choices. I give myself permission to be in progress. Because I am not finished. I am still moving through who I am. I am learning from each experience. And I am learning from each choice.
if I do this, I will make more functional choices. If I do this, I will make healthier choices. If I do this, I will move forward in a way that serves me best. I give myself permission to recognize my humanity. And how and why I make the choices I make. Nice deep breath. It's such a fine line to walk as we're trying to understand this idea of good, healthy, functional choices and the functional nature of the choices that aren't best for us in the medium and long term. Being in a space where we recognize our flaws and the places that we need to improve while still creating the space for us to transform and recognize that we're doing the best that we can. When I am able to do that, I am healthiest, I am happiest, I am moving forward in the way that makes the most sense. And this is something that there are times where I'm really good at it and other times where I'm not. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your feedback on this idea of functional choices and what does functional choices mean and look like to you in your life. I can always be reached Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqna.com. If you know someone in your life who would appreciate a conversation and a tap along like this, please be our ambassador. Pass it along. Don't spam your inbox and send it to everybody in the world. But if you know one or two people who could use this, please pass it along. Because if they are gentler with themselves, if they are making healthier choices, then all of us are going to benefit from that. And I know that sounds a little cheesy, and I say that every single week, but it's the truth. Like, we know that at a core core spot, that when it, when someone we know is healthier, it makes the world a better place. And more and more with what is going on in our lives and in the world, I'm just recognizing that that needs to be something that is at the front of our mind, not something that is casual, not something that is just kind of passing by, but deliberately trying to make the world a better place by helping the people around us. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, I'd encourage you to do so in podcasting parlance. Subscribe is always free. You can go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, anywhere you find audio. You can find the Tapping Q&A podcast. Just search Tapping Q&A. If you have any questions or any comments, you have a topic or something you'd like us to tap on, someone you'd like me to interview in the new year, we're going to do a bunch of interviews in the new year. I can always be reached, Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqna.com or just click on the contact link at the top of the website tappingqna.com or if you're inside of our free app just click on that contact link you can send me an email or a voicemail from right inside of the app inside of the app you have access to every single one of the pieces of audio in our archive including bonus audio that you can only find in the app as well as written out version of the tapping script so you don't even need to hit play you can just scroll to the text area and tap along to the script to make a transformation in your day for the tapping q a podcast this is gene montrastelli i hope you have a great day and i will talk to you real soon bye bye the tapping q a podcast is copyright gene montrastelli tapping q a 2016 All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrestelli or Tapping Q&A.